What's up, Crew Excellence? It's your favorite podcast host, Justin Strickland. I'm back with another rendition, ooh, ACT word, of the Ladder Podcast. If you're new here, I want to say first and foremost, thank you for joining us. I do want to you to know what you're coming here for. This is a podcast centered around leadership. We talk about, man, how you can be a great leader no matter what you're doing. And just a side note, we think everybody's a leader. So don't don't you click off because you're like, man, I ain't no leader. Yes, you are. You just don't know it yet. All right. And this is the place you find out. And so this podcast exists to make you the best you can to move you along your journey towards excellence. And I'm so excited to be here with you today because... What it tells me is that you're in the right place, all right? And so today's episode will be fantastic. But before we get in there, just a little housekeeping. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you think. Let me know how you love us. Let me know that you want more, okay? And turn them noty bells on because we be posting, and I want you to see our dope content. It's for the free. So the least you can do is turn your noties on so you don't miss no free fire content. You feel me? Uh, And so today's episode... It is a uh, higher education focus. I wanted to do some episodes because I'm a higher education leadership coach. And I realized that a lot of my content, although leadership focus, was not based on kind of what my primary coaching I do. And so I wanted to drop some episodes just based on like, hey, this is what I do for a living. And I want to kind of peel back the curtain on what that is. And just show you kind of what's possible when you're when you're working in kind of your gifting and you loving what you do. Okay, so today we're gonna to talk about what a well optimized. Okay, come on. Hey, I hope you got your ACT books out because I'm marking off some words today. A well optimized leadership development program looks like for higher education, right? And how it impacts the right people in the right ways. You feel me? So I want to give you the blueprint to building a leadership development plan or program for any higher education institution. And don't get me wrong, although I work specifically with higher education institutions, this can apply to pretty much any kind of organization or team that you have. All these things are all kind of applicable, right? You just might have to change some of the verbiage, change a little bit of the plan, and then you can still be successful in developing a leadership development strategy for your team. Okay, so we're going to be in the weeds today. I hope y'all don't mind me. I love this stuff. So if if I get a little too nerdy for you, just fast forward a little bit. All right. You know what I mean? Go watch last week's episode. It was good. Um, But I want you I want to take you through kind of my process when I'm developing kind of a a leadership, a plan for these uh, universities so that they can impact the right people in the right way. And it's seven, seven ways. Right. I love I love I know we love numbers. You It helps with my YouTube chapters. Right. So I do seven, seven ways that you can do this. And the first way um, that it does this is your faculty can scale the impact and inspire more students. So working in higher ed myself, one thing that I know is traditionally, habitually, consistently, you are understaffed. Yeah, you who works in student affairs. Yeah, you that works in a registrar. Yeah, you that works in housing. Yeah, you that works in the dean's office. You're understaffed. You don't have enough people. Where are all the people? You don't have enough money for the people. So what a well-optimized leadership plan will do for you is will increase the breadth of your impact per person, which is life-changing, game-changing, right? If you can go from having a team of 10 that impacts 100 people to having a team of 10 that impacts 500 people, right? We're talking about a different world of impact because we're going from addition, right? Or multiplication to exponent. And when we get to exponent, that's when we see kind of the world change. And I know you might be saying, man, I just work in housing. I'm not trying to change the world. But if you impact the right student at the right time, you are literally changing the world. And so you you got to scale your impact, right? So you can inspire more students. How do you do that? You got to prioritize. What are your events, initiatives, uh, daily functions that impact students? And let's do those more. Right. Let's do those more. And I'm. you still got to do the paperwork. You still got to do your your background work. Right. You still got to do your your reporting, all those things. Uh, I, I have to do those things, too. Um, but what can I do where I do those things less than I do the things that impact students? Right. And because I'm doing that more, 
How can I do it more efficiently? How can I impact more students with each touch point? And so thinking through that will help you. Because a lot of times we just think like, I got to do this event. I want the most people to come. Cool. Well, when you do this event, how many people came? Why did they come? How can you make that better? And so re-engineering, reverse engineering all these events is how our impacts, our touch points, depending on where you are, what, what kind of um, area you work in, will help you impact more students in a more efficient way, which can amplify right your vision and mission for your institution. Number two. Well, Optimized Leadership Development Program, what it does is it will filter out ineffective strategies and empowers the staff to focus on what works. Working at higher ed, I've learned a lot of things we do because they've done it. That's why. <laughs> why do we do this? Because we've done it. Well, why do we do this? Because they did it. Why do we do this? Because we've always done it. That's, that's the answer that you get working in higher ed. A ton of those answers. Well, when you have a well-optimized leadership plan, um, what happens is we take a we take away we strip down to the bare bones. Hey, what's effective? What's not? If it's not working, we no longer do it. We don't care if we've done it for twenty years, thirty years, forty years, fifty years. We don't care because tradition is not more important than impact. Come on now. Tradition is not more important than impact. And what I mean by that is just because you've always done something a certain way doesn't mean you should keep doing it that way. We, I would rather me do something new that is more impactful than do something old that is familiar. And so you have to be willing to sacrifice some traditions that are ineffective. Now, if they're working, let's keep doing them. Let's keep cranking them out. But if they're not working, let's focus on what works. Okay. That's, that's what we got to do. That's what's smart. That's what's uh, intelligent, which is what we are if we're working in higher education institutions. We are educated people. So let's use that learning this to be creative and to get away with things that aren't working. Number three, what happens is you have this program that's well optimized and is leadership development based. You will be able to attract top tier talent for your staff, students for your uh, population, and your institution will gain credibility. What does that look like? What am I talking about? I'm talking about how if you, someone says they work at Harvard, what you think and immediately. I'm talking about if someone says they're going to Harvard, what you think immediately. I'm talking about if someone says they are a graduate of Harvard, what you think immediately. We're talking about brand recognition. We're talking about institutional credibility. That's what leadership development does. When people get to your institutions and their professors and your professors, Cornell West, Right. And uh, or, or you have a professor internally, but then they write a best selling book because you create a space to develop them outside of just classroom teaching and they build credibility for your institution. That stuff is invaluable. Right. You don't got to. Bro, I ain't never I've been around 30 years. I've been around college and, and on both sides as a high school advisor, as a college admissions. I've done both like. I ain't never seen no advertisement for Yale or Harvard. Not one. Not a, and I got into Yale. Got into Yale. Went to means. Never saw advertisement. Because you know what, you, what, what it is. You ain't got, we ain't got to advertise nothing. You know what it is. You're going to come here. You're going to get trained. We got the best professors because they get trained. We got the best students, right? We got the best graduates because we have a the leadership plan that 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 goes stretches back generations right and so that's the kind of thing like howard you see here howard you like oh okay you smart bro like i, I get it. right you uh, professors say they teach at howard oh okay cool you you talk, you cream of the crop like those are the things that you want people to say about your institution but the reason that they're not is because your leadership plan is accidental it's not intentional and so well optimized leadership plan a program right will get you into that space Number th number four, number four, you can streamline operations, which helps you reduce burnout and increase job satisfaction. Turnover is a high turnover rates is a problem in higher education. How do you battle that? How do you how do you combat that is you have a, a plan, a program for your staff. And what happens when you have this program is they don't burn out as much because they know they're moving forward. They're progressing. They're going to the next step of their journey as a professional. And because they don't burn out, they have increased job satisfaction and they don't look for another place to go. Right. I love my job. 
I'm not tired of doing my job. It's something new here. I'm growing. I'll stay here. Right? That's a whole different experience than, bro, we keep doing the same stuff. <sighs> here we go again. We got the same means. We're talking about the same thing. Bro, I'm tired of this. I got to do something else. That's a different experience than if you don't have, if you, that's what happens when you don't have a program. Well, you ain't got no plan. That's what happens. But if you got a program, you got a plan. The flip side is, man, ooh, you see that new stuff we got going on? We, oh, hey, so I'm here. And six months later, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to be here because that's the program I'm on. That's the plan I'm on. That's a whole different experience, right? And that's the experience you want to provide as an institution, as a leader of a team or staff. You want to provide that experience because that helps you. The less you got to, time you got to spend on hiring, the less money you got to spend on hiring, the more impactful you can be, okay? Number five, all right? It attracts dedicated professionals who are serious about their growth and contribution. It attracts dedicated professionals that are serious about their growth and contribution. What that does is homegrown talent is great fantastic and you want to be very intentional doing that but it also does is homegrown talent tells the other homeboys who work at other places hey you might want to come over here because we getting it in hey you at conferences oh you go to conferences and you hear about what people doing at day school you're like wait a minute you got professional development time money too you can go like so you didn't have to pay out of pocket for this like they pay for you to come here hmm how many what's your pto look like oh y'all y'all meet once a week and it's, it's like 30, 45 minutes, and that's it? And then you got autonomy, and, oh, she care about you? She be asking about your family? Huh, y'all hiring? Like, you know what I'm saying? That happened. And so when you have a program that develops internally well, what will happen is, outside of that, people who want to grow, people who want to be in healthy spaces, people who want to develop as leaders, they'll come to you. You don't even have to find them no more. They'll be knocking on the door, and you'll get them, and you'll be like, hey, man, you feel like a perfect fit. They're like, I know, I've been looking for y'all. And y'all been looking for me. And so that is, it, it, it's, can you put a price tag on that, right? Can you put a price tag on the qualified people coming to you? How many of us have positions that are open because you can't find nobody qualified? How many of us have positions that been open because you can't find nobody qualified? What would be the difference if you had a brand recognition, if you had a program that internally developed people and that other people knew that that was happening there and they were knocking down your doors for these positions? How, what, would that, what would your day-to-day look like if you were fully staffed? Come on, man. Like These are the things I want y'all to think about, right? Number six, and I'm flying through these. Hope that you're enjoying them. If you're here, if you're staying around, make sure you hit that like button, okay? Number six, it fosters innovation and leadership even when you're not directly involved. Come on now. I'm sorry. I'm going to talk to some high-level leaders right now. What would it look like if your staff came up with stuff on their own? Mm. Mm. I'm going to say it loud for the people in the back who are just dreaming. What would it look like if you didn't have to be in the room to foster creativity, to foster leadership? And they came to you and say, hey, we've been thinking about this. I was working with a couple of students. We think this will work. What can you, can you give? Can we, you know what I'm saying, have your blessing on it? Can you, can you sign off on it? What would it look like if you got to do your job and then just sign off on them doing their job? And their job was innovative. It was creative. It was impactful. Right. And people stepping up in leadership roles. You didn't have to ask them to. You didn't have to say, I need somebody to lead this. I'm like, hey, I'll lead this for you. Whoop -whoop -whoop. What would that look like? What would your day, how much time could you get back if you didn't have to make people be creative? If you didn't have to make people lead. And if they did it on their own because they, they're part of this program, this leadership development program that you've, that you've intentionally developed for them to be this way. Right. That would look way different. And I feel like, for all of us in higher ed, that's the dream, right? That we don't have to micromanage. We don't have to uh, do your job and my job. I can do my job and trust that you're not only doing your, doing your job right now, but you're thinking about doing it better in the future. And so that's something that I think we all want, right? And then number seven is that's what happens, right? What happens if all this happens is you don't got to waste time on what work, what don't work, and everybody there is effective. So you get your time back. I I think – the biggest reason to have a leadership development program, right? And one that runs well, that's systematic, that is thought out, that is intentional, that involves stakeholders, that is impactful, is if you have it, the top leaders, your C-suite people, they get their time back. And what I've discovered is there's nothing more important than a leader's time. 
And so if, if you, if this program, no matter, is there something you would not pay to have your time back? If that meant you could actually do the things on your job description, if you could actually do the thing that you're hired to do, if something that would normally take you two years because you got so much fires to put out would take you six months, what difference would that have on your institution? How would that impact your team, your students, uh, uh, the future of your position? What would that look like for you? And so I think that this kind of ideal, this program is so important that you can't just watch this and be like, no, we don't need it. You need it and you want it. So holler at me. My LinkedIn is going to be in the comments. It's a shameless plug. Hey, I gave you all that for free though. You know what I mean? Now come holler at me, spend some bread and let's change your, let's change the life of your institution. Let's change the life of your staff. Let me give you your time back. Okay. And because what I've realized is if you have your time, you could change the world. The only thing holding you back is you keep having to tell Johnny what to do. But if he knew what to do and he was telling you he was doing other things, you could change the world. And that's what I want. That's all I want. That's that's all I believe in. I believe that you're a world changer and I want to help you be that. All right. So I hope you enjoy this episode. You could be anywhere, but you hung out with me for a few minutes of your day. And I'm sincerely grateful that you did that. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Justin Strickland, I'm the host with the most, okay? And I'm I'm your favorite Crew Excellence member. And so if you want to know more and learn more, hop over to my LinkedIn, send me a DM. We can talk. We can make something happen, okay? But until next time, it's been another wonderful episode of Ladder, and I'm holler at you, man. Peace.